So we want to welcome you to the Sheen Center for Thought and Culture. And we're just so delighted and honored to be here with you tonight for this very special program. My name is Mother Claire. I'm a Franciscan sister of the Renewal. I'm here with Father Christopher Argano, the vocation director for the Archdiocese, and we'll be serving as your MCs tonight. And it's a great honor for us to be here for this really very special and powerful film that we're about to see and for this whole night dedicated to the miracle of forgiveness. And so it's much more than about the genocide that happened 25 years ago. It's much more about the miracle of forgiveness that sets us free. And so we want to give glory and honor to God, to our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom forgiveness flows. So we want to begin with a prayer and just surrender this whole evening and all that will happen uh, to our Lord. Thank you, Mother. Let us pray. God, Father of mercy, from whom all forgiveness flows, you have revealed yourself to us as kind and full of compassion, forgiving transgressions through all generations. In Jesus, we have seen the face of mercy and heard his cry of forgiveness spoken from the altar of the cross. We pray for the wisdom given to us by the Spirit that we too may share in that abundance of your mercy to free us from the shackles of unforgiveness and to have a heart touched by the sweetness of your grace. We entrust this night to you and your holy will. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who is mercy incarnate. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So in just a moment, we're going to see the film that you came here for, Forgiveness is the Secret of Peace? Is that the title? Yep. Sorry, Secret, Secret of, of Peace. peace. Yep. The book has a different title and it's thrown me off. Okay, Forgiveness, the Secret of Peace. And it's an extremely moving and we, we were able to watch it a few weeks ago and afterwards we just had to sit and reflect and just take in what we were experiencing. And so what we're gonna do tonight is we'll show the film and then there will be some time of silence just so that we can do that before we continue the conversation. Then after a few minutes of silence, we'll come back on stage with Father Umbald and also Consoli and perhaps another guest, and we'll continue to have this conversation about what occurred and more importantly, the power of forgiveness in our own lives and how we can take uh, this message into our own experience. Uh, he was the mayor of the district and he gave order to Chiri or Tutsi, um, of the district, and I lost more than 80 members of family in, uh, instead of them, um, in, in, inside them, my mother. And um, before I made the decision to forgive him, I was crying. But when I made the decision to forgive, to forgive, uh, I was healed. Forgiveness here is somebody. And if for you forgive, you must be sincere. You forgive and you are merciful. Forgiveness without mercy is not real. Um, when I forgave him, I went home, but I, had, I stayed with a question. My question was this, does he, does he realize that I forgave him sincerely? So he has been um, convinced when I made a decision to, to, to pay school fees for his child because um, his wife or so died when he was in jail. The two children, where without nobody to take care of them. I made a decision to pay school fees for his boy first, and then after one year, um, the sister or so um, succeeded for secondary school, and I took care of her or, or, or so. Uh, they are, uh, the boy is ready with studies, he's carpenter, he can make his life. The daughter um, made medical schools, and it is so long 
So long and so expensive. <laughs> but God has helped me till now. I, okay, I, I have helped her and I am so happy this year in December she will be medical doctor. And, and you see, I become old man. She will pay or so, she will take care of me as <laughs> So, um, I think as a Christian, as a Christian, you have no choice. You have to forgive if you have to imitate Jesus. It is because of our faith. We believe. Jesus did the same at the cross. Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they are doing. The example is from Jesus. If you asked me such question, the answer is this. It is because of Jesus as Christian. Mm. It's humanly impossible, but with Jesus it is possible. And you're a living witness to that and leading others to that. And constantly, I wonder if you would be able to share with us something of your, your story as well. <laughs> it was, um, before I, uh, I say some, I tell you my story, I would like to thank Father Obald for amazing work he's done, not only for Rwandans, for the world. He's helping the world to heal, and he has really, he's an inspiration to so many of us. I'm really honored and to be sitting next to him and um, and hear his story and the story of my fellow Rwandans. So, um, <laughs> the genocide, <clears throat> when the genocide happened, I was a teenager, I was 14 years old, and um, I lived in a village in the western province um, of the country. So, as you can imagine, as a teenager, I had dreams like any other young kid. So, um, suddenly to to see such horrors like a genocide um, at that tender age, it was very extreme for me. Um, and I didn't know uh, what to think of, uh, especially that I didn't understand very well what was happening to us. So, um, and um, during the three months uh, where we lived, I had, I was, you know, had a family. My, I was very fortunate to have uh, parents who were teachers, uh, my dad and my mom and also a big family on both sides, uh, on my dad's side and on my mom's side. So we were very happy family and uh, my grandparents, my paternal grandparents were our neighbors and, um, and many of our family members were living not too far from each other. So as, um, as a kid, I was always, my parents used to send me to both, uh, to all the families. I, I spent a lot of times with them. So. Um, and when the genocide happened, finding myself with my siblings who were, I was the oldest and uh, my sister was 11 and my three younger brothers aged 9, 7 and 16 months old. And finding ourselves going to hiding for three months, um, suffering, extreme suffering. Uh, and the people who've done that, you've seen uh, in the film, were our neighbors, the people uh, we knew very well. So, and uh, the first month of April, um, when we went into hiding because we had to go through the bushes, like, like he said in the film, we had to hide in the bushes. I saw uh, killers, you know, carry machetes and clubs, and as my parents didn't know what to tell us. They just had to, you know, take us and go into hiding. So, and I remember. The first day, um, the first time we went in hiding, uh, I saw so many people, of course, um, going to hiding in our village. So, and I remember the first home we went, uh, they took us in their home. So, and they hid us in the ceiling, all of us kids and, and our parents. So, sometimes in those times, you never knew who was going to be kind, how people have changed. So, and um, uh, there are so many things, people even who are considered to be our good friends, our family, called killers for us. Others have done the most horrific things to us. And um, 
And that family, when uh, they told us to leave, I remember the time I felt the fear in my heart is when we found ourselves hiding in the bushes in that night. So, and my dad, who was, um, you know, as a kid, you always think your parent is the most strongest person who's going to protect you. Uh, seeing my dad in the bushes where we're hiding in the Sogon plantations, uh, with fear, and my aunt, and all of us, you know, having that fear in our hearts, not knowing uh, what to think. So, but thankfully, my mom had, um, she was so strong enough to tell us to pray. She said, keep praying, keep praying within your heart. So, and um, seeing my dad scared, I'll never forget that image of my dad. So, and that same day um, when the killers approached the bushes when we came out um, because they were calling each other cockroaches we're gonna kill you um, so we all came out so my um, all of us together so my mom kept comforting all of us she had I don't know where she got the strength um, to to keep telling all of us to be together so when we came out in the bushes, this group of killers um, followed you know, my aunt, so they murdered her, but I didn't see that in, with my eyes. Some of my siblings saw what happened. Um, and that day, it, because there were roadblocks everywhere, we had to find a family or a friend who was going to hide us. And um, they were calling on the hills. We found the tutsis, and, and uh, as we reached in this home, when they hid us in their home, my dad decided to uh, go hiding in another place and at least, you know, wherever, you know, we won't be in the same place. The killers decided to follow my dad and um, I remember where we were hiding in the ceiling, um, you know, uh, I was scared, my mom was comforting all of us kids, um, but later that evening, there were killers outside talking and, you know, rewarding themselves with traditional beer, uh, traditional wine um, beer, so talking about how they murder people, how they are going to finish the Tutsis. But they were talking about some people we know they murdered, so, um, but I never uh, thought they were going to say that they have murdered my dad. And it was one of the worst feeling uh, to see my dad, who was not only um, a good parent, he was a good teacher in the community, he has taught so many uh, of their children. Um, my dad had a big heart, um, and now they tortured him simply because he was a Tutsi. And, um, but we didn't know we were going to survive, so, so my mom had to carry the rest of us kids in, you know, to ask someone who was kind to help us. Um, and in those three months, there were people who called the killers for us. They refused to help us. And it was a rainy season. My mom was carrying my younger brother, who was 16 months old, on her back. And the rest of us kids will be following her. Our feet swollen, and we're hungry. And, um, and uh, sometimes, you know, <laughs> um, even myself who was it was considered to be older. I was, you know, I, I lost the, the strength. I was falling. My, I was almost like my younger siblings. My mom would pick me up when I fell. And uh, I remember because we asked help in those three months in many places. And, uh, and I remember one place we went knocking on their door. Um, my mom, it was in the night. We were just asking for help. And uh, when we knock, thank you. When we knock on their door, this woman uh, was in the house with their children, and um, my um, and the, the husband was at the roadblock in the night, so killing, murdering people, so Tutsis, and um, and we didn't know how whether he was going to help us. Uh, thankfully, uh, the children who were in the house, my mom told them in school, and. The more my mom kept begging, please help me and my kids, knocking the door, uh, the kids in the house were crying and begging their mother to help us. Um, thank God these kids were kind enough to think of my mom. Um, and uh, this woman opened the door and she said, if it was not my kids, I wouldn't do it. You know, I wouldn't help. I've never loved the tooth in my life. Um, I will never do this. And it was a miracle to us. It's just God. 
because this woman was, um, didn't have love in her heart, it's just because a miracle from God. So, and um, there were so many places we went, and in those times, um, many killers were finding us and where we were hiding in the bushes. I remember when we discovered where we were hiding in this home, and most of the people who were helping us were, uh, some were very poor, um, and sometimes you used to go to those houses because you would think they would be kind um, compared to others who had uh, the means to help. And um, we were discovered by a group of killers. Um, they took my mom and uh, they said the rest of us kids, um, my siblings, we stayed there. They decided to take my mom, to asking her if she can go to where we lived in our neighborhood. Um, you know, to see whether a fam, you know, um, a neighbor who had kept some of her belongings, if he could, you know, my mom could give some of the things to them so that they can release her. Um, they took my mom, and in our village at that time, so many Tutsis were murdered, mostly men, uh, and um, it, it was rare to find a family um, of five kids and, and, and a parent still alive. It was in uh, around May at that time. And uh, they took my mom uh, there, and uh, she was carrying my younger brother on her back, and uh, as soon as they reached there, this young man who was not only a neighbor, my parents have helped him uh, through school when he didn't have money. So my mom considered him as a family. So he looked at my mom and said, uh, I can't allow anything belonging to Tutsi coming out in this house because I will never be a good Hutu anymore socializing anywhere. So he refused. He was so very mean to my mom my mom was shocked, but she didn't have, she didn't have anything to say. Uh, the killers had to, see, to decide what they're going to do to her. So uh, at the end of the day, the killers were talking in the village and everybody talking how this woman um, is still alive with all her kids and, and um, everybody knew was still alive. And uh, they decided to leave my mom to a neighbor, which was uh, a few minutes away from our home which was completely destroyed. And um, they left her there, and they came back to search for us, um, uh, you know, the rest of us kids. So, and thankfully, um, the man who was hiding us in the house um, decided to tell me and my siblings to leave and go find our mom. And um, I didn't know whether our mom was still alive, so I kept comforting my siblings, and we were, you know, going through the bushes, and. Um, and hearing the killers talking, and sometimes where we'll be sitting in the middle of the bushes, we can see them passing around, talking. So, um, and um, I, that I remember when um, we we were able to find our mom, and um, and when we got there, because there were people who um, told us what happened, it was by the grace of God. So, and the killers decided to. Um, uh, to, to start killing, you know, who they are going to kill and who is going to be left. So uh, they decided to kill my brothers. And at um, and, and that time, it was around May 9th. So um, I remember that day because my mom has, all, you know, put all of us in the room and, um, and told us to pray and praying. So, and one of the worst uh, thing is to see someone among the killers was somebody who was a neighbor, who was um, not only a neighbor, somebody who grew up with my mom. So, um, and he came with a, a group of killers. Um, they took my brothers, as you can imagine, all of us were begging to be taken, but they refused. Um, we saw our brothers walking, uh, holding each other hands. Um, and they were telling it, uh, my younger brother, who was in the middle, that they are joining that in heaven um, because they knew what was going to happen to them. And the rest of us women, uh, we didn't know whether we were going to survive, so we kept hiding, and in those times, you never, who was kind. And, um, and I remember one place we were hiding, um, yeah, because um, women and girls were, rape was used as a weapon. 
um, where we're hiding. This man was our neighbor, um, came and um, took me there. Um, I described what happened in my book. Um, it was horrible. Um, unfortunately, I was raped by him in, not too far from our home. Um, but thankfully, uh, later around, um, because it, my story is a very long story, um, someone kind enough in the Muslim community um, hit us, um, and my mom and my sister, and were able to survive. But my brothers, my three younger brothers were murdered, my father, many of our family members, as you can imagine, were carrying um, the pain within our hearts. Um, it was um, it was not easy because uh, for my mom who has seen because she saw what happened to me she saw me after you know how I looked as you can imagine she was carrying the pain of of not only uh, losing the kids and the husband and everybody in the family but uh, she was carrying the, the the wound in her heart of even the, the the pain of her little girls who was still, who were alive herself so. For me, I was very completely uh, wounded, um, but thankfully my mom, who survived, kept reminding me to pray, to never give up. She um, went back to teach some of the kids of the people who have done the most horrible thing because she was teaching me and my sister uh, to never uh, do the same thing to those who have hurt us. Um, and these men who have murdered, um, my brothers, um, later on, he, um, in Agachacha, we mentioned, so he, um, he wrote a letter uh, to my mom asking for forgiveness that, you know, I put the letter in the book and uh, what he said, that these kids were going to, you know, also to be, to help his family, they say, or going to do something great the same way the f our family has done great things to their family. So not only that, um, uh, later around, you know, with carrying the wounds and, and, and the psychological trauma, um, I found out that I was um, uh, HIV positive as a result of what happened to me. So I had to deal with a lot, you know, the, the wounds of you know, what happened to me and... Constantly, if I could yeah. ask, um, yeah. mm -hmm. in the light of such a, mm -hmm. such a story as you're sharing with us, there was a line in the film where Father says mm -hmm. that the perpetrator holds the key to unlock mm -hmm. forgiveness. And that phrase, the key mm -hmm. to unlock forgiveness. And as you're speaking, mm -hmm. I'm wondering how that forgiveness was unlocked in you after suffering what you have suffered, right. which we cannot really imagine. Right. And we're amazed mm -hmm. that you're sitting here with us today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and what unlocked that key to enable you to forgive and, and to be where you are now? You know, I, I'm so grateful to have really an amazing mother who not only told me to love and never carry hatred and anger, in my heart, she told me to forgive because this man asked for forgiveness and we, we all forgave him. And, uh, and immediately, and as I was talking to my mom, we, we said forgiveness is the best thing you can do for your own well-being. So the freedom you feel in your heart, is um, that's where my journey of healing started. I started uh, because I didn't want to carry uh, the burden, like Father said, you carry them in your heart. It's like a burden. So I didn't want to carry that burden in my heart. Even the men who did the most horrific things to me, when I found the courage to release him, I felt the freedom. I used to have nightmares of him, but I no longer have that. So um, God, you know, having God and knowing, learning about Jesus and how he went on the cross and said, I forgive them. Um, it really, um, um, I kept following the, the, um, the gospel of Jesus. It really has helped me in my journey of, you know, understanding the how important it is to, um, to forgive. Um, even though it's not easy, I was carrying the pain, I needed also healing in my heart. So, and I wanted to, to have the freedom of living a healthy and fulfilling life. 
for the rest of the, my life I have here on earth and be, um, uh, and, and be able to, um, to, to serve and be able to, um, uh, to live well. So for the time I have here. And I think that's what my, my dad will want me. So that's how he will want me to live. And, uh, and I saw how it has helped our family and, um, and for me, and that's the reason why I also loved life again. I felt life was still worth living. And now when I walk in the streets of New York, I feel the joy, I, 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 I really appreciate everything I see. But when you have the wounds and the pain within, you don't see anything, you don't see the beauty, you don't appreciate um, small things in your life. But now I appreciate life. I enjoy every moment of my life. That's the reason why I um, encourage also others to do the same thing if you want to be free and have the, uh, the freedom and have the inner peace the, the, yeah, within yourself. The, and this, um, and when you start from within, it also manifests on the outside. So allowing the, the um, you know, that to come, you know, work. It's a work, I would say it's a work within. So it's, um, uh, it's really, uh, it helps you to, um, uh, to see light. So my, when I was writing my story, I saw, I was thinking about from darkness to light. That's how I made my cover of the book. So from darkness to light. So that's... Tell <laughs> us the, the name of your, your, your book. Um, thank you. Um, the book is called Tested to the Limit. Um, a genocide survivor's story of pain, resilience, and hope. Um, it was a, a journey of, of healing, a journey of allowing myself to be vulnerable and, and think, and now I am um, I'm in this journey also, you know, being helped so much with Father Obal's message. I've been able to now to be able to tell my story uh, in the way I never thought I would be able to share it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You've both spoken about the power of, of God, the power of prayer. And we saw in the, in the film scenes of adoration, scenes at Mass. And I'm wondering, Father, what role have the sacraments played in the healing process for those that experience genocide? Well, I, I repeat the sure. question. I'm wondering what role have the sacraments played in people to heal what happened? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, the sacraments has, have helped after genocide because our country was uh, really Christ, uh, 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 Christian. Catholics, we were 65% and evangelists were about 20%. All together, we were 40, um, 80, 85%. So we have evangelized. With calf, um, we help to people to realize how they have been so bad to their friends. Then we are Christians. It has been so many confessions. As priests, we have confessed. We help the people with adoration. And with adoration, they have been healed. And also, in Catholic Church, I exercise healing ministry because I am engaged in renewal charismatic movement. I have traveled in all over, all over the country saying masses with healing prayers. So it has been so helpful. And um, 
also because of the secret of peace center i created people come you have seen there are so many they come very often every 13 of month we say fatima day because at fatima virgin mary said to visionaries whatever you will ask me at every 13 of month whatever you are asking me to pray for hmm, my son jesus will realize that so they come so many they pass all the night from 12 uh, of every month to 13 they pass a night of prayer and at 13 i say mass with hearing prayer and they are healed um, uh, specifically in a healing, hmm? spiritual healing, uh, of course, or so physical healing. So, yeah, uh, the church has uh, worked so hard to help people after such horror. And amazing, if you come and visit our country, you, you can't realize that it has been genocide. Uh, it was the beginning of the year. It was some Americans who had visited me, and at the beginning of the year, perpetrators of genocide and victims, they organized first to, be, to, to begin the, 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 the first day of the year. They shared meal and they drank, they drank together, and the Americans asked me, where, where were the, where are the perpetrators of genocide? I said, I can't recognize them because they are all together, the victims and perpetrators. I can't, rem I can't know who is perpetrator of genocide or victim because they are sitting together. So nowadays, Rwanda is the best peaceful country in Africa. Yeah, so, so to say that, so to say that the church, the church really has worked so, so hard and we go on working, helping people. Mm. The secret of peace center, um, now it is not only for Rwandans. I see people from Congo, from Burundi, they come to pray there because really they discovered that there is secret of peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what I can say. The Thank you, Father. Yes. Yeah. Father, the, you both brought up the image of the darkness and the light, the darkness and the light. And we saw that, we saw that in the film. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is a testimony of the victory of light, the victory of Jesus mm -hmm. and the resurrection. And, and you, you are living witnesses of this in a, in a way that, uh, is so remarkable. As you're speaking and telling your story, I'm thinking this is the gospel in the flesh, that we are experiencing the gospel. And so I'm wondering what it's like, and this will have to be our last question because we're, we're, we're going to have to wrap up now, but I'm wondering what it's like in, when you're there witnessing in your country for those hundreds of people who have come through your process, but the many hundreds of people who have not yet come through, how you, Father, how do you reach out to them to invite them into this radical um, miracle of forgiveness? How do you reach out to them and bring them into it? Well, um, nowadays, uh, because of media, or so sometimes I say mass at a stadium, national stadium, and television is there. And uh, even those who are not at the stadium, they are with the, the, uh, the radio is broadcasting. And, and yeah, but I, I now try to, 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 uh, to catch many people by media. By media. By, by media or so. Yeah. And also, you, you see, for example, this evening, hmm? yeah. you are here. 
I am sure you will go and witness or so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, it is not me mm-hmm. only. Those who witness the power of forgiveness, they spread also that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I like also America, you are powerful. If you make a decision to, to fight with forgiveness, I am sure the light from America at about forgiveness will be spread to all over the world. Mm. Light from America will be spread to all over the world. Yeah? Mm. Because you have so many ways to, 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 to spread it. Will you pray for us, Father, that we will be like you, that we will be courageous like <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And then maybe we will see it. <laughs> Father, we really, our hearts are filled with gratitude for your witness and for your witness constantly and for this example. And we wish also to be people of mercy and forgiveness, and we hope that you will pray for us. And we want to end now with a prayer that we'll be able to take this message truly to heart that we'll have the grace to do that. And maybe we'll just conclude our our evening with prayer. The Holy Trinity, as we know, is the font of all mercy and all forgiveness. Let us glorify them as together we pray. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May God bless you this day and always, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.